The Great Lakes are some of the largest freshwater lakes in the world. They're basically almost like inland seas of fresh water. If you're ever on a boat in the Great Lakes, or if you're flying over them, the sheer scale of these lakes will amaze you. And there's a ton of really interesting facts about the Great Lakes, so I just wanted to make a video to cover a few of them here. Okay, here's fact one. This first fact is a weird one that has completely changed how I think about the Great Lakes. Look at this map. How many Great Lakes are there? Five, right? Hold up, not so fast. What if I told you Lake Michigan and Lake Huron are actually just one big lake? The only thing that separates these two lakes is the Straits of Mackinac, which is not a river or any sort of elevation change. It's really just a narrow part of the lake. The water level in these two lakes are equalized by the strait. Ships can sail straight through here. No rivers, canals, or locks needed. This is really just one big lake with a narrow section. And actually, as far as lakes go, this narrow section, the Strait of Mackinac, isn't even that narrow. It's about 3.6 miles wide at its narrowest point, which is wider than many lakes are long. I don't really get why we separated this one lake into two to begin with, other than on a map it's hard to see this little connecting bit. So the real reason we only have five Great Lakes is because of a naming convention, which is pretty weird. Lake Huron is the fifth largest lake in the world, with a surface area of 23,000 square miles. Lake Michigan is 22,400 square miles. But combined, Lake Huron, Michigan is the largest freshwater lake in the world, with a surface area of around 45,400 square miles, which beats Lake Superior's measly 31,700 square miles pretty handily. Okay, fact two. It's another weird fact that rewrites common human perceptions. This is Point Pelee, Ontario in Lake Erie and it's the southernmost part of Canada, excluding islands. The coordinates of the southernmost part of the point are 41.91 degrees latitude and negative 82.51 degrees longitude. Let's just go ahead and put a line here at 41.9 degrees latitude and swing across the continent. Just a little bit further here. Let's make sure we head north a little bit. Ah, here we are, sunny California known for beautiful beaches and great surfing. But what's this? The line we put over there in Ontario is actually south of where we are here in California? That's right, the northernmost part of California is actually further north than Point Pelee in Canada. And that's why Canadians in Point Pelee have to work so hard in the winter to maintain their igloos. Okay, final fact. The Great Lakes are considered non-tidal, meaning they're considered to not have tides but there actually are twice daily tides in the Great Lakes. They're just so small that they're not very noticeable. The largest tides in the Great Lakes cause about a five centimeter change in water level. This occurs twice a month during spring tides or when the sun and moon are aligned like this to combine their gravitational forces on the water. Spring tides occur when the moon is either full or new. The Great Lakes tides may be small, but the US National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has water level stations in the Great Lakes, which has allowed them to observe the tides. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe to catch future interesting videos. Check out these other videos I have linked here to learn even more. Also, links to the sources I used for this video are available in the description.